We're True Widow, and you're watching Transmissions Live. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming
Nicole, Dan, and Slim, the Bantry Widow, who are playing tonight at Great American Music Hall in San Francisco. Uh, doors are at 7, show's at 8, um, even though, like you said, we're filming this. We were going to stream it, Inter internet didn't work, so whatever. Technology, man. Technology. So, it's a gamble. Um, let's talk about tone in your sound. Um, can you talk about like the artist simplicity, how you guys kind of restrain your stuff in your songwriting? Is it sort of a planned approach, or is it well, just... I mean, ultimately, that's just how the songs come out, but uh, they're really simple songs. If you play them faster, they'll sound... I mean, we play them at a certain tempo, and it's not always the same. I think every song sort of has a magic tempo that, like, you're trying to find, yeah. but, like, every once in a while we get it. Um, it may not even be on the record at the that's right tempo. That's what I was going to say, yeah. I mean, the record is just that one shot, you know? That, that's how we played it that day at the and studio if, if we did, and we're not, one time. Yeah, exactly. And we're not the kind of people that are going to freak out and, like, re-record stuff. I mean, if it's all right, it's cool. Just yeah. let it ride. They sound good at different tempos, but... Uh, I don't know, yeah, we just... The band developed that way. My original recordings of the first songs that are on the first record are like way faster. Okay. And uh, but they still sound cool. And I thought they sounded slow at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my new slow music. Mm -hmm. But then like now it's like super I'm slow. I'm like, oh, I'll show you slow. Uh, Is it, do you find that? I don't even think it's that slow. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. We, got, we, we refer to it as a groove. Yeah, it's groovy. I mean, people, you know, like when we're trying to play it, there has to be that element to it, like when we're in the moment, as opposed to, oh, let's be sludgy or let's be heavy. It's yeah. like, let's just be groovy. Yeah, you're not aiming to be doomy or stony or whatever. No. Just it's just, you just got big monster tones. and You do have big monster tones and do big your stuff. Talk about being in the pocket. How do you guys, uh, do you just kind of find your way as you're discussing that you just kind of discover this tempo? and, and Yeah, uh, well, like when we're learning a song, we'll try it a little faster or a little mm -hmm. slower. Even in the studio, too, we'll yeah. mess with, well, we could speed this up if we want, you know, we listen to it speed up, sped up, and we're just like, I don't know, you know, like right. we still flung, flubber around with it that way, too. Okay. But, yeah, especially in just working it out, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, yeah sometimes you get it. Sometimes you get it. Right. Like, mm -hmm. and you just kind of but it's that it's later. that night. Like afterwards, you're like, man, so and so song was fucking perfect right. tonight. And now we're here. We have to try and do it again. <laughs> yeah. May not do it. <laughs> it's all about the moments. Yeah.
little bit about the album. Um, let's talk a little bit about the history. What was the first song you guys made, and what did you call it as a band? I know your demos and you and Slim connected, but I think one of the very first songs was probably Sunday Driver. Mm -hmm. okay. It remains to be one of my favorite songs, okay. one we play all the time. Yeah. Uh, Mesh Mask? Mesh Mask. It's pretty high up there, yeah. Um, so we those were sort of, sort of like defining yeah. songs for I the I sound of the band. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Okay. Which ended up being one half of that EP. That we used our recording of that, actually. We didn't re-record that or anything. It was from back when we were still okay. experimenting or whatever. Okay. And the, your second album, um, and then the EP, and then this new album, and the EP was sort of just stuff that didn't make it onto the previous second album? Or no, we had we recorded like 15 songs or something, and for the, for the record, we picked... I don't even know how many are on there. Ten, maybe. I think so. so there was there was a grouping of them that sounded really good as an album, and then there was these these other songs that whatever three or four of them we used for the EP, and then there's still one that's never been anywhere no. that we recorded that during that okay, sure. recording session. And the EP, uh, Kamado had put out some of the demos for that record oh, yeah. on a cassette tape. Uh, okay. So when the idea of the EP came, EP came up, we were like, well, we have this other song that can take up a whole side of a 12-inch, <laughs> and it'd be like our only shot to get it out there, but it's not something you want to go in and re-record. And yeah. they were cool with the way the demo sounded. Nice. So we put that on one side and then put the songs that we really liked that didn't make it onto the record on the other side, and it was kind of like a, you know, where they were at and where they are now okay. kind of vibe. Great. Plus, Dan made a kick-ass painting for the cover. So, yeah. oh, that was on that EP. That's for the whale. Well. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice.
So I like to ask bands, um, do you remember the first album you bought as a This kid? one does. Madonna what, True Blue. Right. <laughs> my first cassette ever. Okay. Yeah. I had uh, <laughs> down the line. Uh, Beastie Boys and Run DMC. Okay. License to Ill. License to Ill. Yeah. Uh, Run DMC tape had like three different colors, covers. Um, I can't remember. Most of the music I was getting into has been given to me by friends or something like that. Free music? Yeah. Back then I listened to free music. Not so much anymore. Free music, man. It was probably some terrible, something terrible. White snake. <laughs> Not that terrible. I saw a dude wearing a white snake t shirt the other day. Of course. I had a I bought that tape too. There's nothing terrible about white snake. Yeah. No, well, just a little terrible. Still in the night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you remember your first concert you went to as a kid or as a fan and what made you like, I want to do this? Uh, well, my first concert was Alice Cooper. And that was uh, my mom's. Her like best friend, his her, her best friend's husband was the lighting guy for Alice Cooper. Okay. So we went and like he cut off his head, <laughs> and like the guitar player had a machine gun guitar. Really nice. Sparks. Uh, so that probably made an impression. I got to hold Alice Cooper's head afterwards. That's <laughs> awesome. But I don't know. That was that was my yeah. first concert. Okay. I was the opposite. Question. I was like the Beach Boys with my parents, but it was pretty cool. Like I loved it. Uh, but the first one I went to, just on my own, like the punk show going on in Dallas, and I was only like, I lived in Arlington, and I was only like fourteen or fifteen, and we convinced our, you know, parents to drop us off, kind of thing. And I think Mill and Colin was headlining, but it was a bunch of like local <laughs> hardcore punk bands, and it was it was really awesome. I knew that it was like. That was like where the spirit was, you know. Okay, right. It was made a big impression. Nice. How about you, Slim? First show. Mm. I've never been to a show that made me want to play a show. Okay. There wasn't Ever? a concert like that for me. No. I just have moments, man. I don't know. Uh, I remember Dan Peters playing his drums off the stage at Trees when I went to see Mud Honey for the first time. Um, I didn't really see a lot of shows until I was like late 80s, early 90s, and then I got into anything that was loud and rowdy. Nice. But Do you remember your first songs you guys practiced and your first riff? I've got tapes. Mm -hmm. I've been playing guitar since I was 10 years old. Okay. And I've got a shitload of tapes. tapes out I've got a wazoo. bunch of singing tapes from when I was a kid before I knew how to play anything. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's probably <laughs> as great as those <laughs> piano tapes of mine. My tapes say like Dan Phillips Live. <laughs> Live in the from yeah. Dan Phillips' bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Well, that is, I'm going to thank you guys very much for your time. I know you're going to wow. get out of your way, get out of these hot lights. Oh.
Thank you.